It's Sunday and uh, we're now on our way to the National Museum of Military History in Diekirch. We had a great weekend in Bastogne and uh, of course the Manin, as you saw uh, on the video of part one. Well, this museum is very special for us because of the museum contains uh, a lot of items from the 352 Volksgrenadier Division. So I hope you uh, enjoy this video and uh, the footage of the museum. Welcome to the National Museum of Military History of Diekirch, Luxembourg. This museum is well worth a visit to view the displays and dioramas in detail. I'm not a tour guide, but I'll discuss some of the items, displays and dioramas in this video. By entering the first room, hard to spot even from a short distance, this German sniper has chosen a rusty electricity pole as his firing position. His weapon is a scope-fitted bolt-action rifle, the famous K98 rifle in 7.92mm caliber. Snipers were highly skilled soldiers and very often fought single in the first front line where they could inflict heavy casualties on the enemy. This particular American aerial delivery canopy was found on the Luxembourg-Belgian border and originates most probably from the airdrop on Bastogne after Christmas 1944. This diorama shows a Pac-40 crew in action near Longsdorf on December 18, 1944. This particular gun was abandoned by the retreating Germans of the 352nd Volksgrenadier Division in Diekirch in January 1945. The German Pac-40 with 7.5 cm caliber anti-tank gun and was to become one of the best anti-tank guns ever designed during World War II, being hard hitting at medium ranges up to 1500 meters. This diorama shows and the US platoon kitchen in action at Bettendorf on November 23, 1944. Wearing asbestos mittens, the company cook just pulls out the frying pan with two crisp brown turkeys, while his assistant is cleaning mess kits in a hot water bog, propped on a jeep trailer full of ration boxes. A medic is trying to make friendship with the farmer's son by presenting him a D-bar. The unit shown here was K Company of the 3rd Battalion. The soldier on the left is a trooper of the 17th Airborne Division wearing climbing spikes on his boots. The weapon he's carrying is a .45 caliber Thompson machine gun. In front of you, you'll see a US plywood assault boat M2 used in the Sorrow River crossing in January 1945 at Deep Curve. On display we see an US tanker from 44-45 standing behind tank ammunition and carrying a M3 .45 caliber submachine gun, referred to as the grease gun. This display shows a German 8cm mortar crew wearing reversible camouflage uniforms in Bostendorf on December 18, 1944. The 8cm motor, which broke down in three parts carried by the crew, has a combat weight of 57 kg and a range of 2400 meters max. The ammunition was often carried together with the mortar on an infantry trolley. Opposite the display of the US tanker is a German tanker displayed. Yeah. 
Next to the US assault boat, there is a display of all sorts of fuses, mines and attachments. Upstairs, at the left side, we see the diorama of a dock in Beaufort near Moustrov, part of a battery attached to the 5th US Infanterie Division during the bulge. The 40mm Beaufort automatic gun of Swedish origin and sold to many countries prior to World War II was one of the most successful light anti-aircraft weapons effective within ceiling range up to 7,000 meters and made a distinctive noise when fired. On the left we see a German paratrooper, member of the 5th Power Division, who fought as ground troops during the Battle of the Bulge. Their equipment consisted of a rimless jump helmet, a camouflage mock worn over the uniform, special jump boots, and ammunition normally carried in special bandoliers around the neck. They carried a G43 self-loading rifle or MP40 submachine gun. Now we are going to see my favorite part of the museum. A rare diorama showing an extensive collection of medical items. The German medical items are harder to come across as during the war the German medical supplies were overstretched and other field hospitals had better supplies. On the left you'll see a fully equipped German medic, the sanitator, and on your right a US medic. This diorama was built exactly as the original picture shown on screen, depicting Roy Lockwood and Jack McFarland, crew members of the 35th Infantry Division in a .30 MG foxhole near Harlange. This cabinet shows a private US bar rifleman of the 5th Infanterie Division during January 1945. And on the right, another display of some small German and US medical items, followed by some German helmets and various German and US small personal belongings, and on the far right, the display of US helmets, combat rations and accessories. In the big display, on the left, a German MG42 Schütze. In the middle, a US infantryman bar gunner and at the right, a US medic are displayed. This 2000 pound US general purpose bomb was found near Konsdorf in 1993. The Jeep is a well known Willys Jeep. This was a popular 4x4 which was cheap to make and easy to mass produce, which is why they were very popular in the war. The US 105mm howitzer M281 was a standard light field howitzer during World War II. And the M4 tractor were used to move things like a field artillery gun. Along with towing, they also carried ammunition in the cargo hold. The M3 half track was a US armored personnel carrier widely used by the Allies during World War II and extensively modified with several dozen variant designs produced for different purposes. This display shows two rifle grenade launcher sets. In the front, the German Gewehrgranatengerat, a 30mm Schiesbecher cup-type rifle grenade launcher that could be mounted on any K-98. And in the back, the M7 grenade launcher, a 22mm rifle grenade launcher attachment for the M1 Garand rifle. This display shows the visor hat, air protection, leather map case and officer's belt worn by Major General Kurt Moering, commandant of the 276th Volksgrenadier Division when he was killed in a staff car on December the 18th, 1944, on the road from Beaufort 
to Grunhof by machine gun fire. The Diamond T Forton 6x6 Wrecker model 969 in the back had a Holmes twin boom design with a swinging boom and powered hoist cable on each side. The medical items which can be seen include tourniquets, bandages, first aid kits which were found in field hospitals and also in various vehicles. The Dodge Ambulance was one of the main military ambulances used throughout the Battle of the Bulge. The folding bench made it easier for the medics in the field to be able to fit in four stretchers of wounded soldiers or six sitting. The SIG-33 Schweres Infanteriegeschutz 33 is a German 150mm towed heavy infantry gun. The maximum range was 4,700 meters and the initial velocity of the projectile 240 meters per second. The PAK 36 Panzerabwehrkanonen 36 is a 37mm caliber German anti-tank gun. It was the main anti-tank weapon of the Wehrmacht Panzerjäger units until 1942. The 10.5 cm LEFH-18 is a German light howitzer and the standard artillery piece of the Wehrmacht. It was superior in caliber to its early opponents in the war with adequate range and firepower. Behind the German medic is the Sunderkraftfahrzeug 251 half-track display. It was a German armored personnel carrier designed by the Hanemach company. The Volkswagen Type 82 Kubelwagen, or simply Kubel, is a light military vehicle designed by Ferdinand Porsche and built by Volkswagen for use by the Nazi German military. The Volkswagen Schwimmwagen, literally swimming car, was a four-wheel drive amphibious vehicle used extensively by German ground forces. The Volkswagen 166 is the most produced amphibious car in history. The Jagdpanzer 38, originally the Leiterpanzerjäger 38, known mostly post-war as Hetzer, was a German light tank destroyer based on a modified Czechoslovakian Panzer 38 chassis. You can see it been driven in my previous video during the reenactment battle in Manet. Next, the Zundab KS750, a motorcycle and sidecar combination developed for the German Wehrmacht. The Flak 30, Flugzeugabwehrkanonen 30 and improved Flak 38 were anti-aircraft guns used by various German forces throughout World War II. It was produced in a variety of models, notably the Flakvliering 38 with combined four Flak 38 autocannons onto a single carriage, to be seen at the back. The two soldier field graves, American and German, located side by side, are typical battlefield burials, as found in early 1945 in the Luxembourg and Belgian Ardennes. Here again a US M3 half-track is displayed, and to the right we see a water truck trailer with cherry cans. The GMC truck, which is best known as being called Jimmy, were the most popular trucks of World War II. This US GMC cargo truck has an open cap, machine gun ring and front mounted winch. This great display shows all sorts of ammunition for the display on the right, 155mm howitzer M1, first produced in 1942 as a medium artillery piece with a maximum firing range of 14,600 meters. The Harley-Davidson WLA in the front is a Harley-Davidson motorcycle that was produced to the US Army specifications and acquired the nickname Liberator. And the two vehicles are Dodge Hafton light 4x4 military WC model trucks. All variants use the same 295 cm wheelbase as the civilian trucks, but with the addition of part-time four-wheel drive.
Here you can find an amazing and extensive collection of various weapons from World War II. There's a good display of Panzerfausts, Panzerstracks and anti-tank mines including the German anti-tank mine 35. A pressured plate mine which had a different fuse and was loaded with TNT. The Wehrmacht used them from 1937 onwards. There's also a huge collection of steel hand granaten, which of course is the well-known and popular German stick grenade. Various mortar shells, again the standard German infantry mortar 8cm, Granatwerfer 34, and next to it the bigger grenade thrower model 42, the 12cm Granatwerfer 42, with a maximum firing range of 6 km. And here we see a great collection of different light carabines, a Browning .30 caliber machine gun, German MG-34s and MG-42s, trench knives and machetes, a Tommy gun, a bar grease guns, different handguns, bolt action rifles, MP-40s, SDGs 44s and so on. Dikirch was occupied by German forces of the 352nd Volksgrenadier Division from December 20, 1944 till January 19, 1945. A heavy snowfall occurred after Christmas 1944 and temperatures dropped. The remaining German troops had to hide well down in private cellars and farmhouse stables for camouflage and shelter. This diorama shows a German advance commando post in a barn somewhere outside of Diekirch. A messenger in winter camouflage uniform is just entering the poorly illuminated room. An officer and a medic are just having a cold meal consisting of pumpernickel bread and lard. This small full-tracked vehicle, known as the Weasel, was designed by the Studebaker Corporation. It saw action during the Battle of the Bulge, where it performed extremely well in the most adverse weather and terrain conditions, saving the lives of many wounded soldiers who could not have been evacuated by a jeep. This diorama shows a German machine gun position to protect the command post of the 13th Regiment of the 5th Para Division along the road to Brandenburg, December 20, 1944. Here we see a German 105mm howitzer with a weight in action of 1525 kg. It fired the standard German 105mm high explosive round and had 5 crew members to operate. The Sonderkraftfahrzeug 2 is a half-tracked motorcycle with a single front wheel, better known as the Kettenkrat. The horse drawn field kitchen, nicknamed Gulaschkun, was able to operate on the front line around the clock. The small diorama on the left shows a German radio man of the 352nd Volksgrenadier Division in the basement of a house near the Sauer River in Diekirch, January 1945. And on the right, an NCO of the Waffen SS with Panzerschreck, a rocket launcher. Here we see the demolition Snake M3. A highly specialized US engineer device serving to clear minefields. In the hands of a skilled crew, the 60mm light mortar was a terribly efficient weapon, proving extremely useful in close support of infantry in wooded areas. The crew seen here are soldiers of the 10th Infantry Regiment in a two piece British issued snow suits. The capture of a German messenger around January 10, 1945 provided valuable intelligence to the 10th Infantry Regiment. And we end the tour of this great museum with a great winter diorama that displays an assault across the Sauer River by American soldiers during the Battle of the Bulge. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and hit the bell button.